a friend asked if I could make a few custom Dread badges in the style of the 2012 Dread film. I thought I would put together a little video on how I did it. There's a few little tricks in here that will be transferable to other projects, so hopefully even if you don't want a Dread badge, you still find this helpful. Firstly, I found a blank Dread badge on Thingiverse and I imported it into Mesh Mixer, which is a fantastic program, and it's free. After importing, I made the file solid, which gave me a sharper looking badge to work onto. Then I hit edit and sliced the badge into two sections. So I had the front details separate from the back. This was so I could remove a section from the front in order to insert the text, but then keep the base of the badge the same. Make sure to change the setting from cut to slice so that you keep both sections. Then you want to hit edit and separate planes to get one for the front and one for the back. With the front detail now selected, I hit edit slice and rotated the plane 90 degrees. You can snap the angle by hovering the mouse over a little dial that appears. I then tilted the plane 10 degrees and positioned it so the slice crosses in the middle of the badge. Again, make sure that you are slicing rather than cutting because we want to keep both sections. Edit and separate planes again and then repeat the slicing of the lower section. And then once you've got the three separate sections, the top, the middle, which we're going to lose, and the bottom, delete the middle section. This should give you the front detail split into two halves with a back base for you to put the words into. Now for the text. I'm certain there's a better way to do this, but it works for me and it uses readily available software. So lucky is a nickname and it's a word I'm going to put in the badge. I settled on impact for the font. I hit control T, which gives me a little square around the text and then I hold control and click on the top right hand corner which means I can skew it. Uh, in Photoshop it gives you an angle when you're skewing so I skew it by 10 degrees so it matches what I've removed from the badge. It doesn't have to be exact it just has to be close. You'll see when I import it I'm going to stretch and squash it to fit um, which means I then have to rotate it slightly to make it fit perfectly. So then export this simple text as a JPEG. JPEGs can be imported into 3D Builder, which again is another free program on Windows. Um, and it converts the JPEG into this kind of interesting looking little stencil, which could be handy for another project, but we want to inverse this. So click inverse on, and there you go, you've got 3D text. Reduce it to 3 mil, or however it can need it to be, and then export it as an STL. Drag and drop this STL into Mesh Mixer and then reposition the text to fit nice and snugly into the space. You'll probably need to squash and stretch it, as I said before, uh, so that it fits perfectly. And again, it doesn't matter that it's exactly 10 degrees. As you can see, I rotate it slightly so that it fits after I've stretched it out slightly. Once you're happy with the position, you can combine everything by selecting all sections and then edit and combine. You can export this as it is as an STL file, but I like to hit Control and A to select all and then I click clear face groups. This then gives me a nice image to look at of the final thing. So anyway, export the STL file and import it into Cura or whatever slicing software you want to use. Resize it so it's the size you want. And then what I like to do to make sure that the bottom has a good adhesion to the bed, I drop it by 0.1 millimeters. Uh, this gives it a nice snug fit. Obviously you can probably drop it by 0.01 millimeters. It just, you want it to be blue on the bottom, I think. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing. This is just how I do it. So I'm printing this with ABS, but to keep things very simple, I'm simply using the generic ABS settings that come with Cura and also generic standard quality settings that come with the program as well. I'm not using any fancy custom settings at all, so you could easily duplicate this with the settings that come with the software. ABS is sometimes a pain. If any of you have worked with it in the past, you'll know that there's a bit of an adhesion issue sometimes. To ensure that it definitely does adhere to the plate, I do use Prit Stick, or um, in this case, I'm using Elmer's glue. It's a purple glue so that it dries clear. Apply it vigorously to the build plate. As you can see, what I like to do is just add 
glue to the build plate between prints. And when I switch to a PLA, I might clean off the build plate, which is fairly straightforward and easy to do. Anyway, set things to print and do something else for a few hours. Once it's finished, it should pop off the bed fairly easily. Um, if you get the knife blade just underneath the edge, you can give it a little twist. And then what we need to do is clean off the armor's glue. Um, this is easily done with a little isopropyl alcohol and a scourer. You could probably just use water. Um, just give it a good scrub and a rinse and then it should be all clean. Now pop it on a radiator somewhere to dry so that we can then prime it. I'm using Polyprop Seal Prime, but any primer should adhere nicely to the ABS. Um, I stuck the badge on a little wooden stick with blue tack uh, so I could get every angle with the spray can. As you can see, I made a second badge with some bullet damage. There we go, nice black badge, ready for some painting. You can use any method that you like to paint these things, but I simply used a metallic gold rattle can that I had already. As you can see, I've written gold on the side because there's a very silver image otherwise, and the amount of times I've thought this was a silver spray paint, uh, and it's not, it's a glorious gold. Um, anyway, so gold, gold spray can. Again, using the blue tack stick method to get every angle, uh, we have a nice shiny gold dread badge. You can leave it here, or you can work into it a bit with some dirty, dirty down. Um, I just used some black acrylic paint, um, which I just shoved on pretty haphazardly. The gold spray paint did act a bit weirdly with the acrylic paint, made it quite difficult to add anything to, um, but I just kept working into it with, with the black to bring out the back details, front details, and then gave it a wipe down with a cloth afterwards to clean up the uh, raised areas. And there we go, Judge Dread. Well, Judge, Judge Lucky. Definitely recommend using Mesh Mixer, uh, getting your head around it. There's a couple of great YouTubers out there that do quick tutorials. Please give me a like and a subscribe if you fancy seeing more videos like this. Um, I'm gonna be making various props uh, from films, various props just from games. I'm making kind of tutorials, but not really. They're just how I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but it's just a way that you can do it. Um, and if you have any ideas for me or um, specific things you want me to try and build, please let me know in the comments. I have so many ideas to build things, but I lack direction sometimes. So I, I feel like having a, an objective really helps me. A friend asked me to build this badge and it got me doing it. This YouTube channel is primarily just to give me something to focus on each week so that I can uh, put something together and be, be proud of it. Anyway, 